Hi, my name's Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to talk to you about EVs um, and how they've been manipulated in the media and how they still are being manipulated in the media. Many, many years ago I watched an episode of Columbo and as my hobby was photography and videography at the time, I took particular interest. And what happened? Um, this chap got murdered in a cinema and they couldn't understand why he went out at a particular time. The, the baddie used what you call subliminal cuts and it's a frame in a video that's so quick that you don't actually see it, you don't register it, but your brain does. And they'd fed him salty food and then it cut into the video, into the film he was watching, a nice cold beer or something like that or a nice glass of orange juice with. And, and of course, his brain registered, he'd been eating salty food, he needed a drink, so he went out and got murdered. Now, <clears throat> Colombo couldn't find evidence of this, so what he did was made a video of him going all around this room where he knew the evidence was, but he couldn't find it, and searching everything. Of course, the guy registered it subliminally, and went straight to see if Columbo had found the evidence. Columbo was watching, got the evidence, nicked the guy. Great. So that was called a subliminal cut. Now over the past few, and some people are more susceptible to them. That's the thing. It's like being hypnotized. Some people can be hypnotized. I can't, I've tried it before, it doesn't work. They, they just give up um, to get rid of bad habits and stuff, it doesn't work. So, but some people are more susceptible. And I think these people that are more susceptible are the ones that have fallen for this EV garbage. Now the subliminal cuts, they're not a video as such, but they're in everyday life. They're in every time you open a newspaper or, well, one of the EV shows, the headlines, the clickbait. So, subliminal cuts have now been replaced by clickbait headlines. Anyway, what started all this off many years ago, if I can just uh, go back here, I started to notice things in trade papers which shouldn't actually have been, in my opinion, in the trade papers. The, the first, I mean the first time, let's, let's go back here. Whoa. This one in particular, I'll show you, has got, to me, uh, one of the, their ex-employees is a big EV fanatic. In my opinion, only retweets partial bits of uh, the EV story. And he's a big follower of my other friend at the Climate Intelligence Unit, who is very, very selective with the bits he... <laughs> with, with the bits he tweets. Very selective but he's not the only one. And as I say, let me just show you why. So here we go, August the 10th, 2022. Remember, this was when EVs were flying off the shelves. There was a two year waiting list. You couldn't get them for love and money and you, you want an EV, sir? Well, I, I don't know when I'll be able to get you one. All I can promise is I'll do my best and we'll revalue your part exchange at the time your EV comes in because it's that far in the future. Just give us a £500 deposit and, and we'll get you on the list. Customer, oh, take, take me money quick, take me money. The, these, these EVs are going for over list. The sooner I can get one, the sooner I can sell it on Autotrader and make a bundle. So here we go. UK used car market down 18.8%. Despite strong demand for used electric vehicles, August the 10th, 2022. This is automotive management. So we click on there and just read it. That's by Tom Seymour. Uh, obviously he sees less when it comes to ICE cars than he does to uh, EVs. UK used car sales shrank by nearly 20% in quarter two despite a 57.1% increase in used electric vehicle sales over the same period. 57. 57.1% up. Jesus Christ. Now, I, I, if I'm a gullible sales manager, if I'm one who takes in, in, in clickbait, this is the one. 
the, the headline, UK used car market down 18.8% despite EV boost. I must get myself some EVs. Where can I get EVs from? Get rid of these ICE cars, get EVs. So here we go. Declines were recorded in each month with falls in April, May and June of of minus 16.8%, minus 20.9% and minus 18.6% respectively. As a result, the market down minus 8.3% year to date on 2021 and minus 12.8% on pre-pandemic 2019. However, battery electric vehicles, BEV sales, rose 57.1% to reach 16,782 units. Well, that's a bit disappointing, isn't it? But it's, it's right down at the bottom. Doubling market share to 1% while plug-in hybrids held relatively stable with 1% growth and 0.9% of the market. Now, at this time when EVs had gone up by 57.1%, it's giving a false impression to people, especially gullible people, young starters in the motor trade and this is a motor trade magazine this is for the motor trade it's not for electric vehicles it's not to publicize electric vehicles in my opinion so i was pretty mad with them i was pretty mad with one guy to start off with and to be fair i'm still pretty mad with him you know two or three years later because he's doing the same now but for another firm hey am chatter my understanding is that there are 410,695 used cars for sale on Autotrader. Only 5,137 are electric vehicles. Only 1.25%. So your figures mean absolutely nothing or are completely misleading. Would it surprise you to know that there are nearly twice as many write-offs for sale on Autotrader than there were EVs? 9,096, which is almost 1% more. Just cut out the sensationalist crap for the good of the motor trade, which pretty much pays your wages. At this point, I feel I must come clean that maths isn't my strong point, but my love of cars is. Now, Tim Rose, the editor, again, I would say condescending. Hi, Barry, thanks for doing those 80 insights. And he's cut 80 insights, so... Cause Tim's on AT's side, he gets a lot of information from there. You've actually confirmed the AM Chatter report on the SMMT figures is correct. If you'd read paragraph 6, it states BEV reach 1% share. And I've put, I don't read articles with misleading clickbait headlines pushing an agenda. That was back in August 11th, 2022. Since then, it's just been the same. August the 10th, 2022 why your customers should be buying electric cars now these people this is a magazine i have forgotten more than they will ever know about selling cars he's telling me that my customers should be buying electric cars now really because with hindsight now we'll see that those people who bought cars then have lost an absolute packet are you going to go back and sue him let's go and have a look why your customers should be buying electric cars now, 10th of August 2022. After that, up 50 some point. The rising price of fuel and cost of living crisis, cost of living crisis back then, the cost of living crisis then was making people buy EVs. The cost of living crisis now is stopping them. <laughs> Over the past 12 months, according to automotive experts, well we'll, put, well, we'll put that in inverted commas, won't we, experts, because they've been proved wrong. As incomes have been increasingly squeezed and the climate change agenda has come into sharp focus in the wake of COP26, the population has been looking for more affordable and greener transport solutions. At the same time, proposals for a zero emission vehicle mandate put forward by the UK government will require a set quota of new models marketed by manufacturers to be EVs. But with new EV registrations predicted to rise by more than 74% in 2022, according to Drive Electric. Drive Electric, what do they do? You think they're objective? Do you think they're impartial? Many manufacturers are already ahead of the curve 
No, they're still behind the curve. Making new EVs more wide. So they were ahead of the curve in 2022, but they're behind it now, you know. Making new EVs more widely available on the market while phasing out in com internal combustion engines, ICE vehicles. On top of that, car dealerships are investing more heavily in adding EVs to their stock range. Yet in recent months, the lower long-term cost of ownership, TCO, of EV compared with ICE has become one of the biggest enablers of their adoption. As EVs become more mainstream, spurred on by new entrants, adding to the competition and disrupting the market, people have also started to trust them more. This was the... This was evidenced... This was evidenced as evidenced... Oh, they're as bad as me, my tweets by a recent EY survey, which found that 49% of customers looking to buy a new car said they would choose an EV. More recent, well, they were lying, weren't they? Who did they ask? This is what gets me with these surveys. They only ask the people. It's when you're selling the car, you ask questions to get a yes answer and you lead people, this is the idea, you lead people on. The people who buy EVs, you could sell cars to because you just get them to answer yes all the time and then at the end you hit them with have we got a deal mr customer and they go yes oh, oh my God. and then they're too embarrassed to say no so you've got a deal that that's how it's supposed to work yet in recent months actually that that just reminds me of a story i went i went on a sales course and uh they were going to video us, and I didn't want to be videoed. At that time, I was a bit camera shy, and I didn't want to be videoed. And basically, I sat at the back of the class and hid until it was my turn. And the salesman, who I was the customer, the salesman selling me a car, and they see how the salesman does. So me being a customer and being an awkward git, um, what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to take people out and put them in a high stress situation. Pretty dangerous. Wait till they're turning right with traffic on coming in a high stress situation, concentrating on the road. You ask them a question. Hey, Mr. Customer, how, how much do you want for your car? He's trying not to get killed. 10 grand. Honest answer. You get an honest answer like that. And then you lead them through the, the system. And then you ask them these closed questions. One of the closed questions that they, they were supposed to ask is, uh, do you want mats and mud flaps in your car? And if you say no, you've bought the car, you don't want mats and mud flaps, but you want the car. And if you say yes, you've bought the car too. It's a closed question. So, Milado here, the, the salesman. Uh, so, so, Mr. Crampton, uh, do you want mats and mud flaps in your car? Um, not only do I not want mats and mud flaps, I don't want the fucking car. <laughs> oh, <laughs> deathly silence. <laughs> they obviously hadn't come across that before. That's it. That's how you get out of closed questions. I'll, I'll give you that one for free. So yeah, back in 2022, everything's hunky-dory, tickety-boo, all going really well. Honestly, just non-stop ever, ever since. All these subliminal cut headlines all dropping into place, even in the motor trade. Not just for customers, even in the motor trade. So you, now you've got all these EV shills. They're all telling you that, oh, EVs are good, EVs are cheap. And it's a constant bombardment of these subliminal messages and the weaker amongst you, the ones that come in my timeline telling me off, telling me I'm a, bull, I'm a bullshitter, even though I've made a video with evidence and I've linked it to it and shown you I'm a bullshitter, I'm a liar. Those are the sheep. Those are the easy hypnotised. Those are the ones that make a fool of themselves when you go to these shows. Yeah, those are, those are the ones that end up on, on stage clucking like a chicken and, and doing all that stuff easily led 
those are what <laughs> those are the first EV adopters easily led people everybody else having said that when it comes to being easily led these microphones this camera as soon as I see it as soon as I see it advertised on the internet I want it latest telly latest camera want it I'm easily led like that but I do have a little bit of knowledge about cars so I'm not easily led there perhaps somebody who sells cameras isn't as easily led when it comes to buying a new camera as I am and uh, here we go August 10th basically any time you see something expressed as a percentage, you can pretty much guarantee it's a lie or an exaggeration, especially when it's something to do with the motor trade. And I've, I've copied in their uh, car dealer, well, car dealer Ed, car dealer Mag, AM Chatter, and Auto Trader UK. Here we go, what, what was that? If you had read the report written by AM Chatter, this is key loop, this is, this is an EV engine. If you had read the report written by AM Chatter, you would have seen that the figures equated to 16,782 units. I didn't, sadly. I can't get past the headlines before exploding. It's getting monotonous now. This is back in 2022. And I've repeated this story. Um, percentages. I did 300% of my Mercedes V-Class target. 300% plus. How did you do that? I sold three cars. My target was one. I sold three. 300% I won a holiday, you know. <laughs> hey, it's, uh, here we go, look. I did 300% of my Mercedes V-Class sales target back in the day. Sounds brilliant until I tell you that my target was one. Why don't you report in registration numbers rather than percentages, which means nothing, and stop trying to brainwash Joe Private. I was even telling them then, back in 2022. And again, this somebody, I'll try and find a tweet, that has, has accused me of jumping on the EV hate bandwagon to make a few pounds doing YouTube videos. I've been doing this for two years, over two years, trying to warn people. I've only just started doing videos. And the only reason I've started videos is not to boost my retirement pension. It's because I'm retiring. I haven't got time before because I was too busy selling diesels and petrols. So that's why. Too many people with vested interest in EVs are in a position to try to influence the market and car buyers. It must stop. February 20th, 2023, the only way I see a lot of main dealers surviving the EV onslaught is if the smaller indie dealers can be brainwashed into buying the glut of overpriced, pre-registered EVs on the market. And that's only to spread the massive losses which are surely to come across the whole of the trade. March 25th, 2023. Join us to celebrate the 2023 AM Award finalist. Whether it's bestie, the, the lead, the first thing you see, whether it's best EV dealership. Well, AM Chatter, at least you won't have to go to any expense finding out who is the best EV dealership. Just line all the contestants up and see who looks the most pissed off and give them the award. You're welcome. They'll be the one that we're losing the most money. This is July 24th, 2023. Younger used EVs selling faster than diesels. I find this report difficult to believe. On Autotrader, there are 9,074 up to two-year-old used BEVs for sale. 11,126 diesels and 39,896 petrols. You are saying that from a choice of 10 times more diesels, EVs outsold them. Is this just battery electric vehicles or are you including petrol and diesel hybrids in this figure too? They never replied, because they don't. But Tom, oh, Tom Seymour. Tom Seymour EVs, but not ICE. Used electric vehicle EV sales are outselling used diesels at less than two years old, according to indicators latest data for June. EVs accounted for 10.6 of used car sales in June compared with 9.2% for diesels for cars under two years of age, which marks a swift and marked change in the market which has seen electric cars struggle to sell earlier in 2023. However, things changed. In the less than four-year-old category where used EVs accounted for just 6.2% of sales with petrol leading the way at 53.8% and diesels falling to 18.2%. 
Talking to vendors and buyers, it seems there is a greater choice of used EV now in the market at less than 24 months old, which is opening up zero emission motoring to more drivers, explained John Mitchell, Indicators UK Group. I wonder how many people they talk to. Significantly reduced prices by Tesla also continue to play a big part in depreciation, as does the massive investment made by car makers in marketing their EVs, blowing money by reducing them. It has been a perfect storm in June for EVs, and it will be interesting to see if these demand trends continue for the rest of the year, he added. EV prices fell by another 1.5% from June to early July, which has helped bring them more into line with ICE. Oh, for They've tanked. They've ta Your investment has dropped. They are not coming into line with ICE cars. They are having to be reduced because they can't sell them. They can't, people don't want to pay a premium on EVs. They'd rather have a nice car. It's that simple. No matter, see, the trouble with me is I haven't got fancy words. I can't write like this. <laughs> All I can do is tell you from the heart my gut feeling, what I've seen, what I've experienced. I'm telling you this as and when they occur. And I've been right all along. You call me what you want. I'm right. I've been right all along. But just remember, it's you sheep, <laughs> you easily led people, you're the ones that are calling me names. <laughs> you shouldn't really call people names. You should look in the mirror, see where you went wrong. AM chatter again. I read with interest your article about 45,323 drivers making the switch to EVs and that there are now 238,544 registered BEVs on the road in 2023 compared to the 175,614 at the same point last year, a 35.8% increase. My question is, are they being driven and are they on the road or have they just been pre-registered and hidden? Please could you tell me how you fact check this information that you've repeated? I read with interest your article entitled which was retweeted by one of your ex-employers. Dealer demand for BEVs exceeds petrol in August amid strong used car market stability. And from what I can see, this headline refers only to this. BEVs continue to increase their desirability amongst retailers with a notable improvement in auction conversion rates. The current average is 1.3 sales attempts, while petrol vehicles have an average of 1.5 sales attempts before selling. For clarification, please could you supply the information that was extracted from? How many cars, which auctions, etc. As I noticed in BCA, the biggest auction today, there are listed 4,100 petrol cars and 301 battery electric vehicles. 2,000 plus petrols have done over 60,000 miles and 1,651 are, are over the age of 10 years. I'm at a loss as to how a fair comparison can be made and how one of the leading names in the motor industry can come up with such utter bullshit and even more misleading EV propaganda. It's just relentless. You know, it's, it's just absolutely relentless. That was the headline, dealer demand. Dealer demand, this is a headline, subliminal. Amy Turner's coming into the fray now. Dealer demand for BEVs exceed petrol in August amid strong used car market stability. Okay, Buzz, well, that, that's, that's just headlines. What about, what about all the cherry picking you do? All the stories? I, I'm a cherry picker. I'll give you an example of cherry picking, should I? Yeah? You want to see a good one? So, Let's just see if we can find this. So here we go. As I mentioned, our, our friend from the Climate Intelligence Unit. And there's a little click who all retweet the same stories. Colin Walker here. Interesting stuff from Auto Traders today. Used electric cars performing well. Used EV prices rose 2.1% in October due to a sustained demand throughout this year. Three to five year old EVs selling an impressive 19 days, fastest selling of all segments. AT Insight, Auto Trader Insight. And I've got a bit of a down on Auto Trader at the moment. I think they're not doing the Motor Trade any good with their, their EV bias. So that's three to five years old. So I go straight on Auto Trader, I look for three to five year old cars. Here we go. 
Somebody pointed out I'd done, uh, took great delight in pointing out that, that 2022 isn't three year old. Well, it's, you know, it's nearly, we're, we're like, I don't know, what, what are we, uh, six weeks off or something, eight weeks off. Uh, and, and to be fair, some of these, 2019, that was first advertised on the 16th of 6, 2023. So bearing in mind these three to five year old cars sell in 19 days, what's happened to this one? Because it's a great price, it's got Auto Trader's great price on it, just there. It's been reduced by nine grand. 32% it's been knocked off, because the EV people like percentages, and it's had seven, another seven decreases. Yeah, five five thousand five hundred pounds off. That's been for sale since the twenty ninth of the first two thousand and twenty three. Nineteen days. These cars sell in nineteen days. Why hasn't that sold in nineteen days? Why haven't these sold in nineteen days? Two thousand nineteen sixty nine. Advertised sixteenth eleventh two thousand and twenty two. These we've done yesterday. They sell in nineteen days. Who makes these averages up? Please tell me. Please show me how you do the averages. Because it's not right. You're giving people false information. If you buy one of these EVs today, what's to say you won't still have it on your forecourt in another two years' time? Just, just garbage. Also, two articles. Market Insight, Auto Trader. Auto Trader Forecast used, this is Amy Turner. Auto Trader Forecast used car market on track for a strong 2024 finish. I don't know anybody, I promise, hand on heart, I don't know anybody who's having a good time at the moment or, or who thinks it's gonna be a strong finish. I, I speak to finance companies, lots of finance companies just recently with the, the problems, lots of warranty people, and I know dealers. I've worked in the motor trade for 50 years. I've worked with a lot of salesmen over 50 years. I'm still friends with a lot of them. Everybody's worried, trust me. This is the important bit. All there you read, petrol and diesel vehicles saw modest YOY, -O -Y, year on year price declines. In brackets, minus 6.4% and minus 7.1% respectively. While electric vehicles, EV prices, show a modest MOM rise, 2.1% a first in two years. Now the first thing that struck me is, They've reported petrol and diesel year on year, and then they've reported EV prices month on month. Why have they reported it month on month? I'll get to it. I'll show you the article that this has taken, been taken out of. Retailers are responding confidently to the demand with battery electric vehicles in the three to five year old segment selling in a brisk 19 days, the fastest of all segments. The strong consumer interest in tight supply conditions are fostering a robust market, enabling retailers to avoid significant price cuts as they anticipate a solid year end. Commenting, Richard Walker, Auto Traders Data and Insights Director said, it's good to see retailers showing more confident pricing trends and following the supply and demand data. Bollocks. Everybody's cutting prices, everybody's slashing prices. That is ostrich mentality. Ostrich mentality. Right, so that's that, that's our take. So I'll cut these two I'll cut these two things in. Let me just photocopy that and let's just we'll we'll do that. Take this is the bit that we're interested in. Where's year on year? There we go. That's the bit that we're interested in. Done. So that's that. Now let's go to, where's that AutoTrader article? That story was taken from AutoTrader Insights. Hughes market stays firm. Well, I'll just turn this sideways. This is the section that was taken. The October figures show the average price of a used petrol car showing the smallest decline down minus 6.4% year on year at £14,699. Diesel's down minus 7.1% at £14,066. And electric vehicles priced 
13.4% lower at 26,819. The typical plug-in hybrid is down 12.5% year on year at 30,834. These prior year comparisons are all negative given the trade price induced fall in retail values. They've cut all that bit out, the comparison with electric vehicles, then gone straight to used electric cars perform well in October too, with used BEV prices rising 2.1% month on month for the first time in two years. They've gone up 2.1% in the last 12 months to down about 50. That, my friends, is subliminal. Positives on EVs in articles, negatives on ICE. When really speaking, ICE cars are going for overbook and EVs are going behind. Somebody said to me yesterday, I've been cherry picking examples that have gone down and I should check motorway and car wow. Guess what? Guess where I got the examples from? I got them from motorway. Motorway, this isn't an advert, they're not paying me to say it. Motorway is an extremely good way for dealers to buy cars. We buy a lot of cars through there, of private people. We get some good cars. So, the best way, what, what's the best way to get the best price for your car? Or, I'll put it another way. What's the best way of finding out exactly how much your car's worth? You put it in the auction. You have dealers bidding against the vehicles in the auction, all together in the same room. Hopefully you get a few people that want it and it drives the price up. That's the best way. Actually, it's not. Because if you go to any auction, in the old days it used to be, I, I took a car to an auction uh, myself when I was just starting to sell cars. Uh, well, as, as I, I was only young, I thought I could be a motor trader. I'd, I'd bought a car, polished it up, put it in the auction, went to watch it go through the auction, uh, and it was like 500, 510, 520, over there at the back, 530, uh, 500, 550, 550. 600, sold, 600, bang, great, I've made a few hundred quid profit. So I waits around for everybody to bugger off home, goes to the office, uh, oh, I've, just, I've just come to get my money. I'm sorry mate, it didn't sell. What do you mean it didn't sell? I, I saw it 600 quid. Oh, he says he was bouncing bids off the wall. <laughs> bouncing bids off the wall, yeah, fictitious buyers. And what they do, same as anything, if there's somebody out there in the crowd, they trot it up to your reserve, and if somebody's daft enough, one of the sheep, to put his hand up, that gavel comes down before you can flip in, <laughs> say, I've been ripped off. So, going to an auction isn't the best way. The best way is online auctions, because you can see, it, only if they don't sell. If you buy it, you can see how much it's gone for, which we bought plenty. But if you don't, if nobody buys them, you can see the highest bids. Trust me, the highest bids, and I, and I can't, the, the trouble is I can't cut them in because I don't want to fall out with motorway and I don't want to fall out with car wow. All I can tell you is if you want to sell your car privately or to a dealer, that's the best way of doing it. You get what your car's worth. I will preface that by saying, you get what your car's worth, not what cap or auto traders say it's worth. They're just written down. You know, if I write down here that your car's worth £100,000, it's on a piece of paper. It's not a cheque. <laughs> it's not a bank transfer. It's a piece of paper. That's what cap and auto trade evaluation systems are. So, don't believe all that shit. And stick with me. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.